Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, and welcome everyone to our Sunday morning Srimad Bhagavatam discussion and reading with the Prabhupada Disciples Association Hare Krishna Society production. And uh, we want to welcome all of the devotees globally who are participating. This is our regular sadhana program weekly sadhana program of <clears throat> four and a half hours of hearing from the community of Vaishnavas that are focused on Prabhupada's teachings without any adulteration or change. Because it seems that in this modern world, everything is ephemeral everything is under change and also it appears that people do change philosophy despite uh, in our society being cautioned not to do so and people quote Prabhupada that Prabhupada said this or Prabhupada said that therefore it must be true and uh, it was interesting to note about six months ago, I quoted uh, a saying that I had heard uh, in uh, the movement when I was fully participating as a president in Toronto, that Prabhupada had said this, work, sam work now samadhi later. Now, one of our God brothers from Australia made, made a point. He said, well, I've never seen that in any of the uh, uh, <clears throat> Vanipedias or scriptures online. Work now, Samadhi later. Very interesting. And uh, the reason I repeated it was because I had heard it from, it was sort of a common expression back then. And everyone understood what it meant. It was like uh, the example of Jayananda, who was basically concentrating on service as opposed to portraying himself as some kind of advanced uh, scholastic Vedic scholar. Work now, Samadhi later. Okay, so we had a, a, some discussion about it and it sort of disappeared into <clears throat> oblivion. Fair enough. But everyone understands the point. The point is we have to concentrate on our spiritual life first uh, and concentrate on our devotional service first and let that devotional service develop the bhakti lada beads let it grow within us by our constant practice and application and this is part of the training discipline of a devotee for example someone that 
is in sports. They undergo a great deal of discipline in order to develop their expertise. It's not that it just comes without any effort. The people actually, a lot of the very successful people, they are high achievers. They practice constantly. They are devoted constantly to their special talent that they're trying to develop. So in the same way, the devotees of Krishna, of Srila Prabhupada, they apply themselves personally to the process. They're not looking for glorification. They're not looking for recognition. They're concentrating on being the best they can be in their own particular situation. They're located globally. Now, you showed it under that. It was interesting today that I got a note from somebody in California. And uh, he says to me, oh, I heard someone quoted, Prabhupada said this, just find yourself a nice boy and go get married. And he was referring to another boy. One man getting married to another man and be happy. Prabhupada said, what? I wrote back to him, no, this is absolutely a fallacy, incorrect. This is not something, Prabhupada never promoted sex life. In fact, I just read an interesting purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita, I may read it later on, about married life in regards to Lord Chaitanya and how he perceived it. So Prabhupada never promoted sense gratification, whether it's homosexual or heterosexual. And we all know that homosexual behavior is not Vaishnava behavior. It's far, far from that. But yet, somehow or other, even in within the ISKCON group, there's some kind of tolerance for that. This woke philosophy that's permeating nowadays. Years ago, it was not even considered a, acceptable even in the Western world. Not acceptable behavior. But nowadays, this liberalism, this wokeism, has become more prominent in society. And this is a demonstration of the degradation of the consciousness of people in the Kali Yuga. It's a very sad state. So Prabhupada, he never taught us to go get married with some boy. This is absolutely something we should be aware of, that people go around and do these things. I don't know who it was that brought that up, but at the same time, there are leaders within that society that make these things up constantly. The Prabhupada said this, Prabhupada said that, Prabhupada said this, and people listen to them and accept what they say. And this is misleading people in a very dramatic way from Krishna. Very sad. So please, everyone, <clears throat> be cautious. If there's any questions that can, may come up in regards to what Prabhupada said or this, we can share it in our community of devotees. We can discuss it. We can understand it. And then we move forward with a clear understanding of what's what. That's what association brings to the table in the Prabhupada Disciples Association. So we'll move forward uh, <clears throat> with the diaries, which I had a chance to read uh, beforehand just to get an understanding of where Prabhupada was back in May. Here we have a picture of him. This looks more at the office. Remember he had that room below Mishra's <clears throat> and uh, it was an office room. 
and uh, had no kitchen and no bathroom, but Prabhupada was living there humbly and making do with whatever arrangements he had. He would go to uh, Mishra's upstairs or he would go to the Ananda Ashram and different arrangements. But here he's sitting with three people, two ladies and one guy. And he's sitting there. He's got the Bhagavatams, these original sets, which we have. You know, we're making an effort maybe to try to get more from some other source. This particular set here from uh, 1962, this is a copy of it. A very nice, uh, beautiful explanation of Krishna consciousness from Srila Prabhupada in his original books. So this picture is showing Prabhupada and <clears throat> he's with the people and they had a tape recorder. Remember, he got his tape recorder stolen. So uh, he moved on from there and he's at 94 Bowery. So there we see Prabhupada, a very interesting photograph. Very humble beginnings. We'll move to the next picture. And here's Prabhupada. And on Sunday, March 6th, Prabhupada said, according to Mayapura Panjaka, today is Advyas day of Gaur Purnima. Devotees at Brindavan and Navadweep are enjoying the celebration. I'm here alone without any devotee companion. But I have come here to serve the Lord and not for personal happiness. I am prepared to live in hell even if I am able to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that his mission should be propagated all over the world, and that is my objective. I do not mind the inconvenience personally felt. So very moving, deep prayers by Srila Prabhupada, demonstrating his transcendental attitude to the difficult situations he was in. This is something we can, we're all in difficulty, all of us. We're all su suffering tremendously. We may not see it, but from day to day, things do change and we will always be tested by the material world. So on June, we're gonna move to Ju June's highlights. So again, Prabhupada breaks the, or the, <clears throat> The work done is broken into books, classes, and kirtans, and letters and contacts. So this is the summary on June 7th, or June 2nd, on account five uh, books, $5. On the 4th, Mike paid the balance for book, $4. Six book collection, Raphael, three taken, $4. One gentleman has taken a set of books. Altogether, five sets distributed out of 16. There's a balance now of 11 sets. On the 8th, there was a book collection of $4. On the 10th, a book collection of $4. Income books, accounts receivable, 80 cents. The 13th, there was a book collection of $2. On the 14th, book collection of 7 So he's progressively selling books. Mr. Smith Press representative, a friend of Carl came to see me, took a note of my activities, took one set of books and book collection was $16. On the 20th book collection was $1.25. On the 21st, one letter written to Paragon Book Gallery. 22nd Theological Lodge at 347 East 72nd Street. Kept one set of books on approval. Institute of Religious Religions and Social Studies invited me to see at 10.30 a.m. with books. <clears throat> and the book collection was $1.23. One, one of the books deposited with the director of the Institute of Religions and Social Studies is settled that the director will directly deposit the value in the bank. So please note it. He's not giving away the books for free. There's uh, there's a rule, you know, if you give something away for free, then a lot of times people put no value in it. So Prabhupada was setting that example by 
charging people some nominal fee for uh, the books that he was distributing. On the 24th, one Michael Grant took one set of books he desires to pay gradually. <laughs> That's Mukunda. Mukunda, who became initiated, got married. Book collection was a dollar. Classes in kirtans. So on the 1st of June, in the evening, there was a meeting. There was a gathering of about 16 heads. Bob came with some flour and suji. I required some flour and Krishna scented. Contribution was $12. The lecture was very interesting. On the 3rd in the evening, there was a class and it was the best than all previous classes. There was attendance about 20 and contribution was $19. So about 90 cents each. On the fourth, a Sanskrit class, the contribution was only $9. In the evening, on the sixth, the meeting was about more than 16 men and women attended. The meeting was interesting, but the collection was poor. Contribution only $9.50. On the eighth, there was a meeting in the evening, about 16 persons attended, one of which was a Chinese woman who became very much interested. The collection was $11. So he's at the Bowery here. It's a little bit more facility for presenting the philosophy. So he's, as you see, his facility is giving him uh, more attendance at the classes. So he's, he's becoming more enlivened because he's seeing some positive response. Tenth in the evening, there was a meeting. Twelve heads present. Contribution was only $8. Super cheap people. 11th in the evening, there was a Sanskrit class, five attendant, and contribution was $2. Eventually, he gives this up. On the 12th, I cooked 12 different items, and all present, more than 16 ladies, and a gentleman ate with great pleasure. So Prabhupada was really working hard. It was all grace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the contribution was $3. Hmm. No money. It's like uh, 25 cents each for lunch. 13th in the morning class discussion on friendship and discipleship with Mr. Paul, Paul Murray. In the evening, attendance was nine only. Somebody paid in the basket $100. So the total contribution was $103. Hmm. Beautiful. On the 14th in the morning class, Carl, Nelson, and Paul attended. On the 15th in the evening meetings, there were about 12 heads. Contribution was 550 only. So he's aware that people are not financially supporting him. The other day, a $100 contribution made by Carl to be paid to Mr. Goldsmith for registration expenses. So he's planning to open up a corporation. It's gone. On the 17th in the evening, there was a meeting collection was only $7. On the 18th, the Sanskrit class was poorly attended by two only. Contribution was $2. On the 20th in the meeting, 16 persons attended and the contribution was only $9. And the contribution, uh, one artist has drawn a picture of Sri Sri Radhakrishna. On the 22nd in the evening, there was a meeting. The attendance was 11, but the collection was only 750. On the 23rd of June, 1966, Mike proposed to become a Vaishnava and married with his girlfriend. That's Mukunda. On the 24th in the evening, there was a meeting and attendance was about 12 and the contribution was only 640. Letters and contracts. We'll read this last section. In June, 1966, went to Immigration and Naturalization Office. They gave me one extension up to September 17th, 1966. Mr. Goldsmith's lawyer came to see me in connection with the society registration. A letter received from Harvey. On the night, received one letter from Secretary Sri Padampat that he is not at present 
interested in temple construction in New York, a laughing stock. On the 10th, invited to attend an eating function on Sunday, the 12th instant. On the 11th, received one letter from Mung Lanoi, Brahmachari, and replied to it on the 12th. J.N. Wonkawala, Wonkawala letter by Irimir posted on the 13th, two letters received from Chandra Shekhar, and the other from the Indian Embassy, D.C. It was good. So he's encouraged here. 14th, Carl deposited money at telephone offices. Expected that next week by Tuesday, there will be telephone connection in my name. $40 paid by Paul for such deposit on the 17th of June, 66. Mr. Smith came to see me. His girlfriend gave me address. Professor De Kurt Lidecker, professor of philosophy at Mary Washington College of Virginia, specializing in oriental philosophy. It is expected incorporation will take place after June 6th, 1966. So even though Prabhupada only got an extension to September 17th, he's still moving forward to establish ISKCON in America. On the 18th, one letter received from Vrindavan and the other received from Tirtha Maharaj. Vrindavan's letter replied and deposited by Don and posted by Don. On the 20th, one letter received from Mangala Niloy. He's trying to get him to come over as a brahmachari and help him. He has no help. Remember, he's on his own here. Today, on the 21st, telephone connection made. I talked with Mr. Bogart and Mrs. LeBlanc inquired about Yolanda, Dr. Mishra twice attempted, but no response. He tried to call Mishra. <clears throat> My phone number given to the Theosophical Lodge, they will inform after consulting Madame Wadia. That's on the 22nd. And on the 24th of June, one letter posted to Brahmachari Mangala Niloy deprecating his views that talk of corporation raised only after his coming in the country. In the morning, I saw Mike's loft. So he's Prabhupada's considering moving there because of the difficulties that he was encountering with this fellow Paul uh, Murray, who he was staying with at the Bowery 94. This is before he opens up they open up the matchless gift store and this movement starts to move forward at a very rapid pace all glories to Srila Prabhupada and the Sankirtan mission that he established throughout the world in a few short years we'll move forward with the chanting of Jaya Radha Madhava and then the Srimad Bhagavatam class I don't know Krishna Kata is getting a set of these beautiful Bhagavatams in the mail from Makun, uh, Maduha in North Carolina. So all glories to the mission of book distribution. Adibo. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunabihari Jamuna <laughs> Jamuna Tira Bana Sadi, 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 Jamu
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Oh my Lord Sri Krishna the son of Vasudeva, the all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you from Srimad Bhagavatam 111. Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narot Naram Cheva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudirayet Tato Jayam Mudirayet one should utter the means of conquest, Srimad Bhagavatam, after offering respectful obeisances, one, to the personality of Godhead Narayana, two, to the Nara Narayana Rishi, who is the supermost human being, three, to the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, then four, to Srila Vyasadeva, the author, from Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 2, 4. Welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on Srimad Bhagavatam. We are reading from the 1962 New Delhi edition. And as we do every week, before we start the reading itself, we recite a few verses from the Canto 1, Chapter 2, which explains the meaning and the benefit of hearing this great, powerful, transcendental literature. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam, 
Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text Number 17. Shrinvatam Svakata Krishnaham Punyasravana Kirtanaham Hridyanta Stohya Badrani Vidhunoti Surit Satam Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is also the Paramatna in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, thus plants the desire for material enjoyment in the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge for hearing his Krishna's messages, which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Text number 18. Nashta prayeshava badrishu nityam bhagavata sevayam bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance in the Bhagavatam class or rendering service unto the pure devotees, all that is inauspicious in the heart of a candidate becomes destroyed almost to nil, and thus loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs comes into being an irrevocable fact. Tadarajastamo bhava kamalo bhadayaschaye chetaye terana viddam Stitam satve prasidati. As soon as irrevocable loving service is fixed up in one's heart, at that time the effects of the nature's mode of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire, and hankerings, etc., do disappear from one's heart, and he becomes fixed up in a mode of goodness, which makes him completely happy. Evam prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogataha bhagavad tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayati. Thus, when one is positively fixed up in the mode of unalloyed goodness, the enlivened minded man, affected by contact of the devotional service of the Lord, can positively know scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association. As we do every week, we will read a few notes, a few translations from a booklet called Gaudiya Kantahar, which was compiled at the direction of his divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. This is from chapter 2. We'll be reading from chapter 2, text 21-22. This is from the Antya Lila of Chaitanya Bhagavata, chapter 3, text 532. Dui stane Bhagavata nama shuni matra Granta Bhagavata Ar Krishna Kripa Patra. The name Bhagavata applies to two things the book Bhagavata and the agent of Krishna's mercy, the devotee Bhagavata. Next text, text 222 from Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 1, text 99. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila. Chapter 1, text 99. Eka Bhagavata Bada Bhagavata Shastra Ar Bhagavata Bhakta Bhakti Rasa Patra One of the Bhagavatas is the great scripture Srimad Bhagavatam. The other is the pure devotee Bhagavatam who is absorbed in Bhakti Rasa. To be noted that this reading we are conducting today is on the basis of Prabhupada's original Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we will be reading from Canto 1, Chapter 5, Text Number 3 and 4. Text Number 3. Jignasitam susampanamapi 
apite mahadadbutam kritaban bharatam yastam sarvarta paribrimhitam jinyasitam fully inquired susampannam well versed api in spite of te your mahadadbutam great and wonderful kritaban prepared yastam what you have done sarvarta including all sequences paribrimhitam elaborately explain translation incidentally all english synonyms translations and purports or by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad founder acharya of the international society for krishna consciousness also known as the krishna consciousness movement your inquiries were full and studies also fulfilled well and there is no doubt about it as you have prepared the great and wonderful work mahabharata which is full of all vedic sequences elaborate to explain purport by shula prabhupad despondency of vyasadeva was certainly not due to his lack of sufficient knowledge because as a student he had fully inquired in the vedic literatures as a result of which the mahabharata is compiled with full explanation of the vedas text number 4 jignyasitam aditam cha brahma yatat sanatanam tatapi shochasyatmanam akritarta eva prabhu jignyasitam deliberated fully well aditam the knowledge obtained cha and brahma the absolute yat what tat that sanatanam eternal tatapi in spite of that shochasi lamenting atmanam unto self akritarta undone eva like prabhu my dear sir translation You have fully deliberated upon impersonal Brahman also and the knowledge derived also in spite of all these why should you be despondent thinking that yourself is undone my dear sir purport the vedanta sutra or brahma sutra compiled by shri vyasadeva is the full deliberation of impersonal absolute feature and it is accepted as the most exalted philosophical exposition in the world it is delineated on the subject of eternity and the clues implemented there are scholarly represented so there cannot be any doubt about the transcendental scholarship of vyasadeva and why it shall be like this that he shall consider himself as undone in the matter o magyanati mirandasya gnanan jana shalakaya chakshuran militam yena tasme shri gurave namaha namaum vishnu padaya Krishna prasthaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vedanta swamin niti namine namaste saraswate deve gauravani pracharine nirvishesha shunyavadi pashatya deshatarine bhakti siddhanta shishyaya bhakti vedanta namine prasannaya prashantaya tasme shri gurave namaha 
ಭಗವದ್ಬಂಧನಂ ಖಾಧ್ಯ ಗುರು ಬಂಧನ ಪೂರ್ವಕ ಕ್ಷೀರ ಶರ್ಕರಯುಕ್ತ ಕದತಿ ವಿಶೇಷತ ಅದಾನಸ್ತ್ರಿನ ದಂತೇರ್ ಇದಂ ಯಾಚಿ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಶ್ರೀಮದುರೂಪಪದಂಭೋಜ ಧೂಳಿಷ್ಯಾಂ ಜನ್ಮ ಜನ್ಮನಿ ಅಂಶೋ ಭಗವತು ಸ್ಮ್ಯಾಂ ಸದಾಸೋಸ್ಮಿ ಸರ್ವತ ತತ್ಕೃಪಾಪೇಕ್ಷಕು ನಿತ್ಯ ತತ್ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟ ಸತ್ಕರೋಮಿ ಸ್ವ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೇತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಅದ್ವೈತಗಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ There is a Gaudiya Vaishnava literature that was compiled after the six Goswamis. It is basically the history of the Gaudiya Sampradaya during the manifested presence of the six Goswamis called Bhakti Ratnakar, compiled in the late 1600s. And it gives the history of of all the great Gaudiya Vaishnavas, especially Narutam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Shamananda Prabhu, and all the great preaching work that the, all of these great Acharyas did after the departure of the six Goswamis. It also explains the genealogy of, the six Go, of, the, of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami's family. Rupan and Sanatana Goswami's family originally came from Karnataka, from a Brahmana community called Goda Saraswata Brahmanas, very strict, original Brahmanical community. And as we know, and as described by Srila Prabhupada, that these six Goswamis were all very highly educated, especially Rupan Sanatana, Even before they became disciples of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were very fluent in Sanskrit, Bengali, Urdu, Persian. They were ministers in the government. They were not some rickshaw driver class. They were highly educated. But yet, despite being so highly educated, we see in the relationship When Lord Chaitanya met Rupan Sanata in Ramakali in West Bengal, the first thing they did is express themselves as the most fallen souls. Matulyu nasti papatma na paradi chakasana parihare apilajya me kim bruve purushottama. They're expressing themselves in the most humble manner that we are the most sinful Nast maturyo nasti papa. No, we are the greatest offenders. We're not even ashamed of this. My dear Lord, kindly forgive us. And it described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita and other Gaudiya Vaishnava literatures that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very impressed with the humility of Sanatan Goswami, of soon to be Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami. Their Muslim names were Dabir Kash and Sakar Malik. The point is that despite their great erudition, their great knowledge, they were, not, they were very modest, very simple. We have all heard in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada has mentioned that story several times, that in Jagannath Puri, Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was so impressed with the humility of Sanatana Goswami that he wanted to embrace him despite the fact that Sanatana Goswami had some kind of skin disease that it didn't matter to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatan Goswami in Varanasi, we see that there is mention in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that for 10 days continuously, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu kept instructing Sanatan Goswami. It is not that the six Goswamis compiled these literatures by research. No, it was revealed to them by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Coming back to the point that before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatan Goswami, there is a very important exchange in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where Sanatan Goswami is expressing to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that regular people, they call me Pandit, but I do not know who I am. I do not know where I'm going. Now, this is a very important point. Sanatan Goswami was not a fool, highly educated. But before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's expressing himself. He's showing the perfect example of Vaishnava humility. This is a very important point. Because we see here in the Bhagavatam that Narada Muni has arrived on the scene and he's detecting that his disciple Vyasadev is not happy. He's not satisfied. He's frustrated. But Veda Vyas was very qualified. Very qualified. I mean, compiled the four Vedas. He had compiled the Puranas. He had compiled the Mahabharata with 100,000 verses. So many other Vedanta Sutra. So many exalted Vedic literatures. But he still did not felt, feel satisfied. And as we go into more detail of all of this, it is very important to understand Prophet is explaining, so there cannot be any doubt about the transcendental scholarship of Vyasadeva and why it shall be like this. He shall consider himself as undone in the matter. So despite the fact that he had such great scholarship to show example to the conditioned souls in this age, he is expressing himself that I'm not happy. I'm not contented. I'm not satisfied. And the explanation will be given because of not glorifying the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, when we look upon, they have that website, Vanipedia, where there are so many beautiful explanations of why Vyasadev received the instruction from Narada, explaining to him the dissatisfaction. This is explained in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, text 19. Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, text 19. When pure knowledge is beyond all material affinity, but is not dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it does not appear very beautiful. Although it is knowledge without a material tinge, what then is the use of fruitive activities which are naturally painful from the beginning and transient by nature, if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord, how can they be attractive? Srila Prophet explains, this is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 5, 12, even after, even after writing many Vedic literatures, Vyasadeva felt very morose. Therefore, his spiritual master, Narada Deva, told him that he could not be happy by writing about the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Up to that time, Srila Vyasadeva had written about the Karmakanda, a Jnanakanda section of the Vedas, but he had not written about Upasanakanda or Bhakti. Thus, his spiritual master Narada chastised him and advised him to write about the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, Srimad Vyasadeva began writing Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, why is this so important? Because we will see in the subsequent verses, as we study this very carefully, Prabhupada is giving systematic explanation of the, that, the reason for the dissatisfaction of Srila Vyasadeva. Interesting in Badrinath, when we went there in 1976 with a devotee named Smarhari, very nice devotee from England, very, very intelligent, very capable devotee. He used to make all kinds of arrangements for all kinds of things. And we went to Badrinath. And when we went there, in Badrinath, the, the sacred place where the Pandavas went there, all the great Acharyas visited there. This is the place where the incarnation of Nara Narayana, the incarnation of the personality of God, had reside there. Every year in the winter, you cannot reside there because there's too much snow. The place is about 10, 11,000 feet above sea level with mountains on both sides that go 18, 19,000 feet. So you can imagine the level of snow to get there. Here in California, just at 4,000 feet, just like a few days ago, we got 8, 10 inches of snow here. But in the place like the, the Himalayas, in Badrinath, it's pretty severe. In the, so the Pujaris have to close down the temple, and they come back in the spring when the snow melt down a little bit. And every spring when they come back, there is fresh incense and fresh lamps that have been offered. And the understanding is that the demigods, the devas from Svargaloka, they come to do the seva, the murti seva, the archa seva in the winter time. And close to Badrinath, there is a nice place called Vyasudguha. This is the place where Vyasadev used to reside 5,000 years ago. And according to the Vedas, he's still there. Of course, if one is qualified to see him, I'm not implying that I'm qualified here. I'm most unqualified. But it's interesting when we tried to go there to say, oh, you cannot go there. You are a foreigner. There is problem with the Chinese up in the mountains. You cannot go there. But some Indian people that were going there trying to get the blessings of Vyasadev. So there's like we've discussed before, there are so many great personalities which are still living in the Chaitanya Bhagavata, which was complete after the departure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's an interesting Sanskrit verse, Adhyapihi Lilakoro, that the activities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even today, now this was written after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime in 1534 AD. Some scholars said 1533 AD. So the Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur expresses that right now, even after his disappearance, these transcendental pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are still being experienced by so many great devotees. We've often told the story how in 1572, in Keturi, Narottam Das Thakur and Lord Nityananda's wife, Janabdevi, organized a very big Vaishnava festival where they installed five different deities, had a massive Samkirtan, invited all the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from everywhere in Bengal, in Orissa, in Bihar, in East Bengal, Everybody came, and it is described in this book, Bhakti Ratnakar, that they had a massive kirtan glorifying on the appearance, on the opening day of these ceremonies. And the entire Panchatattva, 
Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Lord Advaita Prabhu, Sri Thakur, they all came and they were dancing in front of everybody. And this was actually recorded in the historical records of the Gaudiya Sampradaya. For those people who were so stuck up in the bodily materialistic concept, Vapuvad conception of life, this may be a little difficult to understand. Even though some of them are devotees, we don't want to show any disrespect to any devotees. This is not our, our philosophy is to show respect to all devotees, even devotees with whom we may have a philosophical disagreements with. But what we see is some of them have a very poor fund of knowledge and even a poorer fund of realization. That's what he keep arguing. Well, how can Prabhupada do this? This would not be according to the tradition. Oh, really? So you have become such an expert in a tradition that you know better than Prabhupada, the ambassador of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya Senapati Bhakta, who went all over the world and brought the mission and message of Lord Chaitanya, and you have become such a big scholar and a big pundit that you know you know tradition better than him. Very interesting. Tradition according to whom? It's interesting. People make arguments without thinking about the ramifications and consequences of their statement. Just like in the legal field in criminal law, if a suspect, or sometimes in law they call a person of interest, is being interrogated by, interrogated by the police or by detective, skinful detectives are not going to sit down in the first 30 seconds and start accusing him all kinds of things. They'll, let, they'll make him talk. Where were you? What did you do? What did you do after that? What did you do before that? In other words, they'll, they'll get him to talk to open up. Some will open up, some won't. But they're very skilled at answering questions in a way to elicit answers that the criminal <laughs> will inc incriminate themselves. So one has to be intelligent. Prabhupada knows all the tradition. He knew all the history of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, of his spiritual master's institution. He understood and knew everything very well. And whatever arrangement he made before his departure were perfectly according to tradition, perfectly according to Shastra or scriptural regulation. Just like in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, this is an important example. There is the story according to a book called Prapanamrita. This is a historical account of the development of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. And they describe how Ramanujacharya, at that point he was a householder, and there had been some dispute with his, his wife or his family. So he went to the temple of Varadaraja in Kanchipuram in northern Tamil Nadu and went into the temple with his householder clothes, came out with sannyasi clothes. He took sannyas by himself. Now, that is Ramanujacharya. No one can really imitate that. So is somebody, some upstart, going to say that he didn't follow the tradition? He didn't follow the, the normal standard? So one has to be very careful when people launch these kind of big declarations about tradition and so-called knowledge of Shastra. Prabhupada had complete knowledge of Shastra, complete knowledge of tradition, and everything we did was complete and perfect. If those that don't understand this, they should study these books more carefully, original books. Of course, if one ch ch changes the books, there might be a very different result, a very different understanding to whom it may concern, respectfully presented. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that wonderful explanation of today's verses. 
and purports and a deep insight into the pastimes of Srila Prabhupada uh, from your direct recollections and experience. And this is very valuable for all of us to get this association of God brothers who have been blessed by Srila Prabhupada and his personal association. And I was listening, uh, Prabhu, to a lecture uh, <clears throat> in my car. And uh, Prabhupada was referring to Shruta codes. Uh, just like today's verse, the Vedanta Sutra or Brahman Sutra compiled by Srila Vyasadeva is the full deliberation of impersonal absolute feature and it is accepted as the most exalted philosophical expression in the world. So these are codes. Prabhupada used the example, even in business, there are codes that business people use. He used the specific term CIF, cash including freight. And in this way, uh, people conduct business with codes. And so the Vedic literature, the verses are codes of insight into the absolute truth made available to the common man uh, for easy understanding in this iron age of quarrel and hypocrisy. So Prabhupada has referred to the terms in today's purport, Vedanta Sutra and <clears throat> Brahma Sutra. So there are all kinds of verses that Prabhupada has explained in his lecture that are available for us. For example, the Srimad Bhagavatam is 18,000 verses. 18,000. And the Mahabharata is over 100,000 verses that give insight. And so there are millions, actually millions of verses, of codes of understanding of what spiritual life is. Now it's strange, isn't it, uh, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, that before Prabhupada came to the West, people had little or no understanding of these truths. None. Zero. Codes of truth. Because the Western world is so engulfed in Maya, so engulfed in illusion, so engulfed in petty conversation, news, the news, it's the garbage. It's like you get the newspaper. We don't get the newspaper anymore. But we used to get the newspaper. You'd read it, and what would you do with it right after? Throw it away. Because it was garbage, garbage news, garbage music. The same three chords and stupid lyrics that people create for personal aggrandizement and material success. So much frivolous conversation, frivolous literature, frivolous activity that completely destroys the spiritual opportunity of the human form of life, completely destroys it. And this is the infection that we're trying to overcome and there is a treasured house of information in the Vedic literature, and Prabhupada is directing us to utilize our time carefully in this manner. Because time is a very valuable asset, everyone. Time and tide wait for no man. And the proper utilization of time is described in Srimad Bhagavatam, both by ri rising and setting of the sun, uh, 
the time reduces the life of everyone except those who utilize the time for studying, glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. And we're very fortunate, everyone, and I wanted to bring this point up, you showed in Andana Prabhu, that Prabhupada has summarized uh, for us all his disciples uh, in his books, the Shruta, the codes of religion for us as disciples to study carefully. And he even stressed Dharma Bhavana, that one should be careful not to read other books. This is a serious disease that can affect the devotional creeper of the devotee. For example, people that go off and start reading these literatures given by the Gaudi Amat. I have so many here that have been given to me from different people in my library here. And I look at them occasionally. I think, oh, let me just see if I should read this or study this. And then invariably, I turn away from them and go directly to our books. Our translations that Srila Prabhupada has meticulously and <clears throat> articulately given to us for our benefit. Because this is the unique relationship between the guru and disciple. It's a personal relationship, very personal. So many people may give opinion, oh, I think he's this or that. Really, the only opinion we're interested in is the opinion of our spiritual master and Krishna. The prophet said, do not try to see Krishna, but try to act in such a way that Krishna will want to see you. This is the main focus of the devotee, the discipline of a great devotee is his focus or her focus on the orders of our spiritual master. And so he insisted, and there are many quotes in that <clears throat> manner given by Srila Prabhupada for us to remember this, just simply study Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar of Devotion. I believe there's 132 books of different sizes and shapes that have been given by Srila Prabhupada. It's an encyclopedia of information. It's not just a little bit, it's a lot. I have uh, 37 or 38 volumes of Prabhupada's discussions. I don't know if any of you have that uh, set of books, but they are conversations between Prabhupada, all his converts, conversations transcribed into English for people to study and read everything because it was actually the mercy of the devotees that we at least understood our group that we should capture this valuable information because Krishna Kata is very valuable to understand this one point that everything that Prabhupada spoke is Shastra. It's just like Lord Chaitanya, everything he spoke was Shastra. It wasn't mental concoction. It was an opinion. It was a transcendental message from the spiritual world for the benefit of the conditioned souls to get out of this cycle of repeated birth and death, which we're all in. For one who is born, death is certain. For one who has died, birth is certain. This is a rule of life that cannot be ignored. So utilization of time and a focus on Prabhupada's books should be the business of the disciples who are in the Prabhupada Disciples Association mission. This reading of all these other books can lead to Sahajism, very much so. 
where people start to talk like they're on some prema bhakti level. Oh, and they're discussing Ras Leela. You see it every day. Discussing Ras Leela like there's some kind of gopi. There was a group called the Gopi Bhava clique that it emerged in our society even during Prabhupada's presence. Not good. And this is all due to deviations from the strict path of bhakti yoga given by Srila Prabhupada to his disciples. Just like association. Be very <laughs> careful who you associate with. Be very careful. I know some of us, we have friends. I know I have friends from the ISKCON movement years ago. I get criticized. Oh, I saw that picture of you with Gopal. Well, I knew these people. I worked with them for years and years and years. So there are some photos of this and that. Does it mean that I'm part of their group? Of course not. We're kind people. We're respectful people. But at the same time, we do not agree with them and their philosophy. Not at all. And it is important to note here, there is no compromise. None. I saw a person speaking in New Orleans and I asked a question on Facebook. I said, well, uh, what book is he using? And the answer was, I, I think he uses the unedited books, but he doesn't. Sometimes he uses the other books. What is this madness? I asked a further question. Does he accept the bogus Iskon gurus as representatives of our disciplic succession? Mm, I'm not sure. I said, well, he's in a compromised position. And that's a reflection of his consciousness, which is not understood thoroughly the teachings of Srila Prabhupada as he delivered them to his bona fide disciples. So this reading of other books, the studying of the Gaudi Amat, this can only lead to so much confusion. And Prabhupada sent me a personal letter. He said, do not associate with my God brothers. So that's our instruction. You showed an and a Prabhu. If you could further elaborate and then we'll move. I wanted, I wanted to quote part of a purport. Am I is that a, a part of a purport from Chaitanya Charitamrita, yeah. Madhya Lila, chapter 19, text 160. Madhya Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 19, text 160. The, the text says, if one does not distinguish between the Bhaktilata creeper and the other creepers, the sprinkling of water is misused because the other creepers are nourished while the bhakti lata creeper is curtailed, purport by Srila Prabhupada. If one chants the Hare Krishna mantra while committing offenses, these unwanted creepers will grow. One should not take advantage of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra for some material profit. As mentioned in verse 159, the unwanted creepers have been described by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakura. He states that if one hears in chants without trying to give up offenses, one becomes materially attached to sense gratification. One may also desire freedom from material bondage like the Mayavadis, or one may become attached to the yoga siddhis and desire wonderful yogic powers. If one is attached to wonderful material activities, one is called siddhi lobi, greedy for material perfection. One may also be victimized by diplomatic or crooked behavior, or one may associate with women for illicit sex. Others may make a show of devotional service like the Prakrita Sahajiyas, or one, this is the, a very important point here, or one may try to support his philosophy by joining some caste or identifying himself with a certain dynasty claiming a monopoly 
on spiritual advancement. Thus, with the support of family tradition, one may become a pseudo-guru or so-called spiritual master. One may become attached to the four sinful activities, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and meat-eating, or one may consider the Vaishnava belong to belong to a mundane caste or creed. One may think, uh, this is a Hindu Vaishnav, this is a European Vaishnav, a European Vaishnav is not allowed to enter the temples. In other words, one may consider Vaishnavas in terms of birth, thinking of one a Brahmana Vaishnava, a Shudra Vaishnava, a Mlecha Vaishnava, and so on. One may also try to carry out a professional business while chanting the Hare Krishna mantra or reading Srimad Bhagavatam, or one may try to increase his monetary trend by illegal means. So this way, Prabhupada describes many of the dangers and pitfalls, especially this false idea of claiming monopoly on spiritual advancement. I see that we have uh, Balaganesh Prabhu and Nilesh Dalal Prabhu with their raised hand. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble business. Am I audible, Prabhu? You're speaking a little fast. Slow down. Okay. Okay. Okay, Prabhu. So, uh, hope it is uh, audible, Prabhu. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, yeah. Very uh, interesting and thought provoking insights from yourself and uh, Vishwakarma Prabhu. Thanks a lot, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, this was uh, the, my question was uh, related to understanding of the Srila Prabhupada's purports. Uh, so, uh, in one conversation, Srila Prabhupada says, uh, he explains about uh, a question on did Ramachandra ate meat. So, some of uh, our devotees are saying, quoting those statements and concluding that Ramachandra ate meat. So, is it a proper understanding, Prabhu? They quote no Srila Prabhupada. There is no yeah. record of Prabhupada ever making such no, a statement. No, they are quoting a con. They are, yes, Prabhu. They are quoting a conversation uh, that uh, that happened uh, when uh, Akshayanand Prabhu <coughs> Akshayanand Prabhu asked this question. Prabhupada says that uh, Ramachandra, I mean Ramachandra, can eat the entire world also. He can devour the entire world, not just meat. Mm -hmm. So when he compares yeah. with the construction of a bridge, why don't you imitate construction of bridge? So is it proper to quote Shila Prabhupada and uh, say okay? Srila Prabhupada told Ramachandra ate meat. How to understand this, Prabhu? So, Well, again, just like I'm re repeating the point that was made by Vishwakarma Prabhu, there's a lot of different literatures, a lot of different leelas, <laughs> a lot of different statements in the Shastras. It has to be heard from a realized soul like Prabhupada. One cannot screw out some meaning which is not intended. That is very important. So the, the difficulty we have is people making interpretation for sense gratification. But I would not put much attention to that interpretation. Hare Krishna. Thanks a lot, Prabhu. And one more uh, small question, Prabhu. Uh, you told about Bhakti Ratnakar during your conversation, okay, about the biography of the Vaishnavas. I found it very interesting. At the same time, uh, Vishwakarma Prabhu told that we should not read anything other than uh, Srila Prabhupada's books. So if I wanted to refer to those biographies, it's available uh, by some translations from his con devotees. Uh, can we read or should we abstain it uh, uh, and don't refer to them, Prabhu? Well, the one thing you may want to do is go on Vanipedia and look at all the statements that Prabhupada made by different citations from the Bhakti Ratnakar. That can be the first thing. And I'm aware that there's been different translations of Bhakti Ratnakar. I don't, I've never read the this, this, this sequential translations, although I'm pretty familiar with most of the stories. But uh, devotees have to use their intelligence. They cannot jump over to all these different translations without first studying the information given by the Acharya. That's why I suggested a devotee, go to the Vanipedia website or some other website and look at all these different quotations from Srila Prabhupada about Bhakti Ratnakar. There's so many different citations there that are given. 
And then if they want to go, just like in Prabhupada's books, there is a statement that devotees should read the Briyad Bhagavatamrita, but Prabhupada did not translate that book. So devotees have translated that book and they're reading that. And another place in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, when Prabhupada talks about the biography of Madhvacharya, Sripad Madhvacharya, Prabhupada did not translate that biography. But Prabhupada said that one should consult that book if one wants to know more about the biography. So there are different statements by Srila Prabhupada. When this issue came up in a discussion with Achyutananda where people said that uh, whether or not we should read the the books of the previous Acharya, that whether we should or should not. Prabhupada said, I never said that you should not read the books of the previous Acharya, but you should read our books first. In other words, if one reads and studies our books, the Bhagavatam books, the Prabhupada's books, so, you know, if one reads Prabhupada's, especially those original first edition books, then will we get a solid understanding. Otherwise, it's very easy for people to be lost because then people get translations. We don't know what is the qualification of the translator. We don't know what is their political affiliation or whatever. So it creates a problem. Hare Krishna. Exactly, Prabhu. Yeah, and one more question can I ask, Prabhu, or should I wait? Oh, hold on, hold on. You, you've gone okay. with one question or three questions. There's some other people here. We'll deal with your questions later. Sure, thanks a lot, Prabhu. Go ahead, Vishwakarma, Prabhu. Oh, Vishwakarma? Oh, yes. Uh, I wanted to make a comment about uh, Bala Ganesh's statement that ISKCON people have stated this or that. There is a real question of credibility when it comes to ISKCON people. Their credibility is not a credibility that we accept. Sure, it's possible that there may be some truth, but it's like milk touched by the lips of a serpent becomes poisonous. So you be very careful reading so-called translations and books from the ISKCON people. Like, for example, there's a book, Journey Home. And there are other books that are being promoted in our mission that are considered to be bona fide or authorized. But these books are not books that are given by Srila Prabhupada. They're not authorized by Prabhupada. And yet somehow or other, they're being studied by the students of this movement. So their credibility, their validity, and their understanding should be carefully avoided by all of us. Nilesh in Miami. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. My only question to anybody and everybody which asks, yes. can I read this book or can I read that book or can I read this one or can I read that one? What is the ultimate purpose of reading all these books? If I were to ask one question, what is the purpose or the significance to understand or read these books? And if you tell me that, oh, I want to go back home, back to Godhead, then Prabhupada has already said, that whatever I've given you is enough for you to go back home, back to Godhead. But we still insist, like stupid students, where the teacher has given us a certain syllabus. And that syllabus is a very limited syllabus. But we, out of our material contamination, are mm -hmm. trying to say, no, no, but I want to read this book also. And I want to read that book also. And I want to read this book also. If you have immaculate faith in Srila Prabhupada and his words, then he, we need to stick to those words saying, I have given you everything which you need to go back home, back to God. That's number one. We need to be very clear about it. Yes, you can read whatever you want. There are tons and tons of books out there. But what is the ultimate purpose behind it all? We need to understand that part. The second part which I wanted to ask, it was very interesting which uh, Yashodhanandan Prabhu just read from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where how that deviations lead to other deviations. And there Prabhupada talks about uh, different types of Vaishnavas, European Vaishnavas, American Vaishnavas, Indian Vaishnavas, 
And of course, he is very strongly referring to is what's going on in Jagannath Puri, where uh, his American disciples were, are even today, refused entry into the uh, Lord Jagannath's temple. But of course, Lord Jagannath has uh, uh, immense mercy on all of us that whoever he refuses to see inside his temple, he comes out of the temple and then he gives darshan to everybody. But that's besides the point. So I was wondering, I read uh, about one Prabhuji, I forget his name now, where he says that Pra Prabhupada refused to go back to uh, Jagannath Puri because of this particular offense. And, but he wanted to create a ISKCON center in Jagannath Puri and this person started this ISKCON center over there because he comes from a background of uh, Odia, ODC background. So uh, I wanted to know something about uh, that uh, about uh, the pastimes of Srila Prabhupada uh, in Jagannath Puri and his stance against the Jagannath Puri uh, temple's uh, position to not allow these so-called uh, European Vaishnavas. And then lastly, I'd just like to make one quick comment as to how these um, uh, different types of uh, uh, creepers grow along with your Bhakti Lata Beej, but they, they grow on the uh, expense of your Bhakti Lata Beej, is we can see what's happening. That in Bombay, now we have is the Bhakti, Veda, uh, Bhakti Vedanta Hospital. Iskon Chopati has started is uh, Bhakti Vedanta Hospital at Mira Road in Mumbai and called it uh, Bhakti, uh, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada uh, Memorial Hospital. Now, when did Prabhupada tell us to do this? But this hospital is there. Offshoot of that, they have created now a detox center called the Govardhan Eco Village, which is on the outskirts of Bombay in the rural part of Maharashtra where you can go and detoxify your body through different Ayurvedic treatments and stuff. They have just built a 42-room uh, hotel in that particular area. Now you tell me what is these, how does this that transgressions is actually occurring in front of us where people have deviated and these deviations have lead to what kind of results? Your comments, Prabhuji. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make a quick, quick comment. Go ahead. You showed Go ahead. Is just, just quickly, uh, because this is a, a very uh, detailed discussion, uh, Shama, on these matters of deviations. But you know, when people get money and they have success, they're looking for ways and means to promote themselves and their work in the guru business. And this goes on in the name of so-called Chaitanya Vaishnavism. And we know that Prabhupada has specifically directed us to be focused on what we do, which is the practice of bhakti yoga and not the practice of philanthropy, altruism, you know, opening hospitals, uh, running these uh, massive food distribution programs. We're not sure exactly what they are, but uh, nonetheless, our main focus is in the preaching of the Sankirtan mission of Lord Chaitanya. So let's stay focused on that. Uh, Yashoda Nandana, please. I'm going to make a, a very brief statement. There is a clear difference between the followers of the Rupa Anuga Sampradaya, the bona fide followers of Rupa Goswami, true Srila Prabhupada, and those who follow the Rupi Anuga Sampradaya. The Rupi Anuga Sampradaya is mostly concerned with money making by no matter what. So those are deviations which Prabhupada has very clearly, just like we read in this purport of Chaitanya Charitamrita a few minutes ago. So we have to very clearly distinguish, to learn to distinguish the difference between bona fide Rupa Anuga Sampradaya and people who follow the Rupi Anuga Sampradaya. <laughs> Thank you. Tim Lee, Paranjana, I see you've made some interesting comments on the Gaudi Amat Infiltration. I was in Mexico recently, uh, Krishna Kata, and I saw that the Gaudiya Mat 
members, whoever they are, there's all kinds of these sannyasis, are going to Mexico and preaching to the very sincere people there and making them disciples. So this is uh, another outreach opportunity, fresh preaching grounds to build numbers. Maybe you could make a few comments today. Tim Lee, Paranjana Prabhu. Is he available? Is he still there? I hope so. He was there. Ron John? 11, 1128. Let me see if he's still there. Doesn't appear. Dharma Bhavana, a yeah. co couple of comments. Go ahead. Okay. I uh, just unmuted. Yeah, thank you. Um, Hare Krishna. Uh, a, a few months ago, there was one of the local ladies took part in the Zoom class. And uh, she asked a question maybe yeah. beyond her realization about Radharani or something. And um, she said that she was chastised for asking the question. And I said, wow, what mercy. And I was uh, <laughs> telling her that if you, uh, if you're trying to become a devotee, you need to get you know, chastised because that's how you start on this path that our pride becomes minimized and our false ego becomes uh, less. And that way we can actually start to, to become a devotee. So and I, another part of that was that um, it was a comment that not not enough ladies take part in our discussions. And I said, OK, fine. Ladies are very important. They're just as important as anyone. And and they should try to take part more and more and ask questions, try to make comments. And I think uh, there's you know, so much that, that will happen more and more in the future. But now not as many ladies take part. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Howdy, both. Well, there's quite a few women on the classes and we have a large uh, attendance list of attendees to our classes, which include a lot of women. And uh, we don't make any discrimination between men or women at all. Uh, we have certain rules that we put up for in the invitations that you can read when you get your email for the link. But basically, we do not restrict men or women. It's up to your desire if you want to be a part. Mm -hmm. Yes, Yashoda. Go ahead. Yashoda Prabhu. There is an interesting conversation uh, in the Prabhupada conversation book where Prabhupada is talking with an Indian gentleman about Bhagavad Gita. He was discussing chapter 2, text number 13, that uh -huh. famous verse, Dehi no Sminyata Dehi. And the Indian gentleman asked Prabhupada, what about Radharani? But first, you understand that you're not the body. First, understand this verse. Then we can talk about Radharani. And then Prabhupada said, Radharani is not mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Because first, you have to understand you're not the body and how to act with that proper level of consciousness. So that was Prabhupada's answer to people, oh, I want to hear about Radharani. Yeah, that's... Uh... I don't think anyone chastised her. I don't recall that. I mean, we just told her the truth. Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth because it is not what they want to hear. The answer is not what they want to hear. So truth has nothing to do with opinion. Narcissistic opinion of one individual trying to ascertain why they were born and why they're here. The first thing is one should stay humble. Try to stay humble in this world of multiple living entities, billions and billions of them. Stay humble. Um, we've got, you showed us, we've got Kevin G. I think mm -hmm. he's had his hand up yesterday. Let's try to get a question from him. Sure. Kevin G. Where, where are you? Hare Any Krishna. Verse? Yeah. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare uh, Bhadanavas to all the devotees. Thank you very much for the class. Uh, there's so many things that were said. Uh, <laughs> so many things. Like, I, I just, like, I just, yeah, I'm just lighting up, like, uh, because there's so many things. I just had a phone call. Uh, I just wanted to comment because uh, some things you mentioned, uh, 
um, just for coming up, brother, I had a phone call yesterday with a friend of mine who uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. hasn't spoken to her in a little while. Uh, but uh, she was coming to um, the uh, just a hand, small handful of times. She came to the um, Tennessee Temple of Prabhupada established 1975, uh, Rari Sevika. And uh, that's the temple I, um, this kind of temple I was. Uh, Exposed to it, learned about it um, five years ago when I moved to Tennessee. After I was attending Kishore Kishore Chicago for my whole Krishna consciousness since uh, 2013, serving, spending time with devotees there, and uh, spent the summer there before I moved here. And I moved here, went and visited, uh, served Nitai Gora Chandra and the deities, and um, and uh, she came to temple uh, a few times, and then she found out, and I found out, uh, there was a Prabhupada disciple who used to stay at the Marari Sevika property, and uh, he uh, decided one day, uh, I have Krishna Prema now, and uh, these young followers he has back then, uh, three years ago, he told them, oh, you all have Krishna Prema also. You don't have to follow the four regs anymore. And, and my friend, uh, <laughs> my young friend was serving there on weekends. He um, used to go help. He said he saw marijuana smoking was happening in front of the deities. And uh, he said, okay, this is crazy. I can't come here until this nonsense goes away. And uh, so this person was removed from the property and he started his own property. And so on farm property project uh, 30 minutes or so away. And so my friend started going to this new property. Um, and uh, she, uh, so, yeah, this is fast forward uh, just to sum it up. She says, uh, uh, all these people, the, they all call him a guru. He, yeah, he's a guru. So he gives initiations. And, uh, and uh, oh, my God, these young people are getting initiated for this person. And. Oh, he's the guru and uh, the guru this guru that so I basically um yeah just uh, through the years because of devotees learning guru tattva more and more especially having contact with um Parandrana Prabhu also um was described to her uh, you can't follow these people who say guru is here guru this guru that no matter how much you know, they get promoted as guru, no matter how much you see people worshiping this person, they cannot become guru. Like, you can't just all of a sudden sprout and become guru someday. And you have to get the Shakti from Krishna himself. And yeah, this is just total nonsense. And uh, it's very dangerous because, yeah, we absorb those qualities. And uh, yeah, the beach. Like if there's no bhakti lada beach, then it's just the uh, cheating beach that we're getting. We're getting uh, um, all these other qualities. We we'll absorb what we worship, and uh, yeah, someone can. Um, then it's just a completely offensive. We'll absorb offensive qualities, and uh, so yeah, it's very um, Okay. Well, you know, things are going on. Uh, these things are going on. And uh, just try to stay steady with our program. And thank you. Krishna Gita, one last point, please. Okay, thank you. This is class is so full of nectar. Thank you. Can you hear me, by the way? <laughs> yeah, we can. Thank you. So much nectar. Be... And again, because the Jiva soul is attracted to the truth, you know, I'm just so absorbed here. There's really no need for me to comment, except for the most recent from Nilesh about the hospital and the, the you know, the, how do you say, the uh, detox center and all these things. You know, Prabhupada said, this is just for the body. We are, we are here to help people with their soul. We're going to feed their soul. We don't care about the body. The body is temporary. And so when you look at the personality that led the charge to build this. He's all about the body. He's all about fame and adoration and distinction and profit. And so it, it, it fits what his agenda is. 
his agenda isn't, you know, a preaching center and Prabhupada's pure books like we're doing, like you and Yashoda. His agenda is no, let my let my let me put, you know, my spiritual master's name on something that he directly said, don't do this. <laughs> and then when he was challenged, he said, Well, Prabhupada's not my guru. It's like, okay, but you're putting the name of our spiritual master on this hospital, but he's not your guru. So it's clear that he was just chasing money, chasing sense gratification. And anytime there's something like that built, it's just an extension of your own personal sense gratification. The, these are what the, these are the teachings of Prabhupada. It's just, it's just simply an extension of your of your lusty desire to fame and adoration and distinction and profit. And that's all that is. It's just helping the body. That's it. All right. So, well, thank sorry. you, everyone. <laughs> thank you all for such a great, another great meeting, another great class, so many good discussions. Thank you all so much. Hare Krishna. Well, well, this is the opportunity of uh, association with like-minded devotees, and we build momentum together as uh, servants of Srila Prabhupada. And Nilesh made a good point. What is, he, he asked a question, uh, why do you read the books? Why are you studying? And when the answer is this, because you're making an effort to please your spiritual master. That's right. That is the answer. We study the books. We practice our devotional service. We offer respect to others because this will please Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was speaking in a lecture. He was saying that our custom is to call one another Prabhu. What does Prabhu mean? You're my master. When people forget this etiquette, when they forget what is Krishna consciousness, which is the association of devotees who are serving the pure devotee, when they become enamored or involved in other things, which are deviant to Srila Prabhupada's teachings, that will cause them to become uh, confused so confused and bewildered by this material world, which is a deep, dark well of confusion. So all glories to Srila Prabhupada and the Sankirtan Prabhuji. mission. Who's, who's that? Who's That's that? me, Nilesh. I can't see your hand. You know, this reminds me of one uh, pastime, <laughs> which, uh, which uh, Shruta Kirti Prabhu was telling us uh, he being the his Prabhupada secretary, personal secretary for quite some time. So he was saying once he was sitting with Srila Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was lost in the in the ecstasy of his books. And he says, If anybody read this Krishna book, they'll go back home back to Godhead. And then afterwards he says, No, no, no. If anybody reads only this chapter of this book. They'll go back home, back to God, if they understand it properly. And then he says, no, if they even read one paragraph of this book, they will go back home, back to God. This was the ecstasy which Prabhupada showed from his books. So if we were to understand what he has given us to the point where he's telling us to understand, we don't even to read the whole book. We don't even to read the whole chapter. We don't even need to read the whole paragraph. He says one sentence and we can go back home, back to God. So why increase our syllabi? The Prabhupada has given us the syllabus, stick to it. And that's what we need to reach our final destination. Gatir Anyatha. Gatir, final destination. You see? Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Excellent. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we will see you next Wednesday evening for right. Chaitanya Charitam Rita class. And if you have any uh, questions or you want to reach out to us, there are email addresses are available on uh, social media. 
and you can reach uh, you can reach me anytime on uh, Facebook Messenger. And uh, in this way, we can stay in contact and communication. We have to communicate with each other in the hopes of overcoming this war on Maya. So all glories to the Sankirtan movement, all glories to the Prabhupada Disciples Association, Hare Krishna Society. Hare Bo. Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Yadaita Gadadha Sivasadi Gauratam Let us offer our respectful obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnava devotees. Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord who can fulfill the desires of everyone, just like desire trees, and who are full of compassion for the fallen souls. Hare Krishna. Thanks, everybody, for participating to this lively and interesting discussion. Thank you, Venkat Bhatta Prabhu, for managing the program. 
Vijay Pandit Prabhu, come va, come va. Va bene, bene. grazie. Va ah, benissimo. Molto bene. Ah. This is a special, special sadhu sangha, real sangha. Arrivo. <laughs> tutte le glorie, si va divine grazie al Silo Prabhupada. Tutte le glorie, tutte le glorie. Apakrita Prabhu, come sa va, sa va bien? Is he there? Apakrita, no, not there. Very good, very good. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhu, come sa va, sa va bien? Aparkrita? Aribolo? No, not there. Okay, we'll see everybody on uh, on next Wednesday for Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Thanks everybody for participating. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sri Guru Sri Juta Padakamalam Sri Guram Vaishnav Vangsha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tang Sajeevam Shaddaitam Shabadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya